why do you get zombie cells? There are about 10 major things that go wrong in the body that explain all disease, especially all the diseases of aging. Now, each of us is made up of about 30 trillion cells. They all work together in harmony to do all sorts of things in your body to survive day to day and year to year. But sometimes the process of regulating our cells, of replication, you know, killing the old cells that need to be killed, recycling the parts that need to be recycled, it goes awry. And it goes awry for a lot of reasons we're going to get into, but mostly have to do with our really crappy environment, lifestyle, and toxins. Now, when cells don't properly die or get recycled, through a die through a process called apoptosis, which is basically like, just means the cells kind of die normally, um, or uh, they're not able to be cleaned up through this process of autophagy, which sort of means self-cannibalism or self-eating, they kind of aren't useful as cells anymore, but they become these zombie cells. And these zombie cells, turns out, are a key part of the aging process, or what we call uh, senescent cells. Senescence means the process of aging. I like to call them zombie cells because they're cells that never die. <laughs> and they, they're not just floating around just doing nothing. They're producing this really nasty set of compounds that are driving inflammation throughout the body and then they make other cells into zombie cells so they just accelerate the collection of zombie cells in your body and the more zombie cells you have the less well your body works the faster you age the sooner you die so the key is to learn about why you get them and stop the zombie cell accumulation in the zombie apocalypse and to learn really cool tools about how to kill the zombie cells. And we're going to talk about what those are in a minute. So stay tuned for this. Now, these these inflammatory chemicals, we call them cytokines. And, and when the zombie cells are active, they're producing, they're doing basically nothing except producing these nasty sets of inflammatory signals and chemicals that are causing everything from heart disease to cancer to osteoarthritis, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's, and the list goes on. And it's one of the underlying things we call the hallmarks of aging. And I just finished my book called Young Forever, The Secrets to Your Healthiest, Longest Life. Uh, and it's coming out February 21st, 2023. So make sure you get it. It's going to go way more into detail on all this. But bottom line is there are about 10 major things that go wrong in the body that explain all disease, especially all the diseases of aging. And in medicine, we basically go and treat the symptoms and not the cause. Hallmarks are going upstream and working on the root causes of the diseases. But there's also the causes of the hallmarks, which I get into in the book. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole today, but the problem with zombie cells is um, we are getting more and more of them, and we are not able to actually help our bodies stay healthy. So let's let's talk about the zombie apocalypse and why it's so important and and you know how we have to think about fixing this problem. Now the zombie cells are are not killed by regular programmed cell death. You know, you've got 30 trillion cells but your cells are constantly turning over some every minute, some every day, some every week, some every year, some every, you know, decade, but your cells turn over in every part of your body and and that process is highly organized and it's a very smart process of either killing the cells through programmed cell death, we call apoptosis, which clears out old damaged cells. And then this process called autophagy, which actually also basically like a Pac-Man will eat the, the dying cells and or the old cells and recycle the parts. Like when you, when you for example, fast, your body can't use food to make new parts. So it basically breaks down old cells and uses them for recycled parts. Uh, but the problem is sometimes apoptosis, autophagy don't work and the cells don't really quite die. And they become what we call zombie cells or senescent cells. Now, why do you get zombie cells? Well, it can be caused by DNA damage, which is caused by our inflammatory lifestyle, toxins in our diet, processed food, sugar, obviously all the environmental toxins that were exposed to 84,000 toxins in the last 100 years, only 1% have been tested for safety. Um, it can be uh, when we're reprodu reproducing and, and ourselves, when we're replicating ourselves, we use um, these, these little um, 
things at the end of our uh, chromosomes called telomeres to keep the DNA, you know, healthy and, and, and proper. And when when you have these short telomeres, because as you age, your telomeres shorten, uh, sometimes that process will not really lead to the death of the, of the cells, but actually to to actually these zombie cells. So uh, the pre- predominant re- reasons, though, are chemical toxic stress, our inflammatory diet and lifestyle, and, and the things that we actually have control over. And these accelerate all the age-related diseases, cancer, heart disease, liver disease, dementia, cataracts, Parkinson's, arthritis, muscle loss, uh, all that stuff, that, and more, obviously, are affected by these zombie cells. That's why they're one of the key factors in aging. And in fact, there's billions of dollars being spent on looking at how do we kill these zombie cells and what do we do about it? Now, while these zombie cells wander around your body, they secrete really dangerous molecules. These molecules are called cytokines and all kinds of other molecules with big scientific names. Basically, they drive inflammation, and then they also cause more zombie cells. So the neighboring cells kind of rapidly become senescent or zombie cells too, and that leads to this vicious cycle. So as we age and our immune system stops functioning as well, which is why, right, as we get older, we're more susceptible to cancer, more susceptible to infection because our immune systems aren't as strong. And so we see more older people dying with COVID. Our body can't really handle these zombie cells at all. And, and it just makes this whole thing worse. So uh, you get this whole inflammatory cascade. These inflammatory molecules flood your body. They cause damage and they cause something called inflammaging which is one of the hallmarks of aging as well that I talk about in my book. But inflammaging is, is, is driving so many of our chronic diseases. Everything you know about as far as a chronic illness is usually caused by inflammation. Heart disease, obviously cancer, diabetes, obesity, dementia, even things like depression, autism, all these diseases that we see, in addition, obviously, autoimmune diseases, all are connected to uh, inflammation. So what, what's interesting, though, is, is um, if we can break this cycle of the self-perpetuating zombie apocalypse uh, and kill these zombie cells, which we're learning about through the research, we can actually slow the process of aging down, maybe even reverse it. Now, what's really cool is that there's these natural and pharmaceutical compounds that actually kill them and stop the progression of inflammation and allow for your body to repair tissue and rejuvenate and remodel. And, and these compounds are called senolytics. So senescence is aging. Lytic means to stop or blow up or break. Or, so you basically stop the process of these senescent cells. And the senolytics are a new category of both natural compounds and pharmaceutical compounds. Now, one really cool study uh, actually used something called quercetin. Quercetin is a natural compound. It's found in apples and onions. Uh, and uh, it actually has so many beneficial effects. It's uh, antiviral. It it's actually can be helpful in COVID. Uh, it helps gut healing. It's like a natural antihistamine. It's just it's an amazing compound. And it comes from our food. And they basically combine this with a leukemia chemo drug called uh, uh, Dasinib, which was incredibly effective in killing zombie cells. And they did this in mice. And their lifespan was extended by 36%. That means if you're like, a human, you live to 80, that means you're going to live to look over 120 if you take these two compounds. Now, it hasn't been done in humans yet, so I wouldn't start doing that. But quercetin is benign. It's it's uh, in relatively inexpensive. It's accessible. And there's no downside and potentially a lot of upside. It's one of my key parts of my longevity strategy. Now, other natural compounds also kill zombie cells. Um, now, in the edible plant kingdom, there's about 25,000 different compounds we call phytochemicals. These molecules are produced by plants. They, they're they their defense systems. They help defend against harsh conditions and predators. But our bodies use them. Uh, and what's really interesting is that you know, these are plant compounds. Why? What, what would they have to do with us? But we've co-evolved with these plants, I believe, in this process of um, symbiotic phytoadaptation and or, or you know, we kind of co-evolve with these compounds to use them for different bodily functions. Uh, and, and I think this is a really important thing to understand because when we start to understand that food is medicine and that actually there are certain ways that our bodies are lazy and use these things to help regulate our function, we know about this. For example, we know about resveratrol, which is a, a kind of red wine that apparently helps extend life in animals and, and rodents and, and, and so forth. 
Well, how does it work? It works on certain pathways, like like CERT one, which is a, a, a regulator of aging. So we know that these these actual plant compounds bind to different receptors and pathways in our body, just like medication, and actually work in ways that activate things in a, in a way that's optimal. Rather than blocking or inhibiting a pathway, which what most medication does, it actually helps uh, optimize function and improve the system's working. Now, what are some of these senolytic compounds? Uh, and by the way, there's a lot of money being thrown at drug discovery to try to find drugs that are senolytics, but you don't have to look very far to find plant compounds that are senolytics. So my favorite is called fisetin. comes from strawberries, persimmons, apples, cucumbers, and onions. Super important. It's part of my daily regimen. And it's shown to be a very powerful senolytic. Luteolin, another plant compound found in carrots, broccoli, artichokes, onions, cabbage, apple skins. Of course, Tim, we talked about, that's uh, something that you can get in food as well. Apples, grapes, berries, broccoli, citrus, fruit, cherries, curcumin, which is found in turmeric, which is a curry spice. Uh, there's also alkaloids found in, in long peppers, all, uh, all kinds of things that we can use to actually activate these things. Now, there are pharmaceuticals that are coming out to look at this, uh, but it, it probably is going to be not too far in the future that we're able to look at uh, taking a supplement with the right combination of these natural senolytics, maybe new pharma pharmacologic compounds that rest and stop this uh, zombie apocalypse. Uh, and there's one other thing that works besides food, which is hyperbaric oxygen. In Israel, they did a, a, long, a long controlled study showing that better than actually any any plant or pharmaceutical compounds that we've discovered so far, that hyperbaric oxygen, which is where you go in a basically a decompression chamber, 100% oxygen, they put you like an atmosphere or two under the water, or basically it'd be like 33 to 66 feet under the ocean, uh, and that much pressure will uh, actually create an anti-inflammatory state, will create this uh, process whereby you both lengthen telomeres and you kill zombie cells, which is pretty amazing. So uh, I'm kind of excited about, about actually how we're using these new and innovative therapies to uh, help us stave off aging and to help reverse what's going on. Uh, also, intermittent fasting or time restricted eating can help. Exercise is really key. Uh, hot therapy, saunas, hormesis uh, is great. We've talked about hormesis on the podcast, but essentially it's a process of something that doesn't kill you but makes you stronger. For example, like exercise, if you tear your muscles, you're you're injuring yourself, but you also come back stronger. So uh, heat therapy is one of those things. So there's a lot of ways we can actually learn to re reduce the production of zombie cells by a healthy lifestyle and to increase the killing of the zombie cells by both lifestyle uh, habits, as we talked about, hyperbaric oxygen, and natural uh, plant-based senolytics, and maybe even around the corner, uh, more advanced com combinations of these compounds or even pharmaceutical drugs that help to kill the zombie cells. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. We also think for so many years that fat causes you to be fat, but it's actually not fat that causes you to be fat. It's starch and sugar and not just any kind of sugar. We're going to talk about fructose in a minute and why it's such a unique factor in fatty 